Hey guys, I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics, and we are here today with Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, let's go back to the Atmos um, sort of uh, topic over here. Yes, we're going to talk about the Atmos. They're calling it the Atmos Elevation Speaker, or you know, before when we shot our first video, it was called the Atmos Enabled Speaker. So now it's starting to become uh, nomenclature. Mm -hmm. We use the elevation. Mm -hmm. And back when we shot our first video, we were very skeptical about the tech because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, we knew nothing about it. Right. You know, Dolby wasn't answering emails. They weren't answering calls. Everything seemed like it had to be under a non-disclosure agreement. It was. I felt like I was dealing with Roswell or dealing with freaking Area 51. <laughs> Crash dummies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just didn't want to give any information, which, right. you know, if you want um, a technology to be adopted not only by the consumers but by the press, it's a good idea to give some tech info and not try to be so secretive. So um, we did our best to do some digging. We talked to some of the speaker designers. I examined the patent behind mm -hmm. the Atmos Elevation speaker. And, you know, you can read all about this in our article. And uh, yeah, I'll give some credit. There's some there's some pretty innovative work that Dolby did that you know their speaker partners are doing. But let's you know let's try to break it down. I'm going to kind of keep this simple for the video because yeah. we've got like a 5,000 word editorial with Dr. Yeah. Floyd Tool in there quoting. Top expert for those for that don't for know. acoustics. Yeah, we have you know Andrew Jones, the loudspeaker designer for Pioneer, giving his contribution. But you know the thing I found interesting about the Atmos Elevation speaker, first of all, is it is a patent that Dolby holds. And if you're putting Atmos on your speaker, if you're a manufacturer, you are paying a licensing fee to Dolby. And this is the first time I've ever seen Dolby actually license speaker technology. And it's almost like, what is this? It's almost like THX right. in, in some aspects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that kind of caught us off guard. Um, you know, it's just something that we've never seen them do before. And it's in it's the same breath, it's brilliant for them because now mm -hmm. they get royalties for it. Absolutely. And they're Atmos, technology is compatible with their stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to give you a breakdown, here's what's happening with an Atmos speaker. We don't have an actual Atmos speaker here. So we brought our, um, <laughs> our, our SVS Ultra speaker and our JBL. We're gonna kind of make our own mm -hmm. and we'll describe, you know, what's in the patent. So the patent basically calls out a couple of things. It calls out a transfer function, which is called the human related transfer function. And what that is, you, you can put the graph up in the video, is you get about a, uh, you know, you get a rise at seven kilohertz in the frequency response to create that elevation effect, and then a notch above that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to simulate the human transfer function of how we perceive elevated sound from a localized source. So, you know, in our research that we found, you know, this basic transfer function, which was derived like 42 years ago, according right. to Dr. Toole in our editorial note on it, um, it's been around for a while, it's not a secret, but it's different for every person. Every person hears differently. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what might work for me may not work, may not work, for me. work as well mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. So there's some variability there on that. But anyways, this type of processing is typically done at the DSP side in their Avery receiver, which it should be. I mean, if you're gonna start bumping and then notching, very low Q uh, type correction, or moderately Q, like a Q of three, I mm -hmm. think, you're gonna to wanna to do that in the digital domain. You really don't wanna do that in the analog domain. There's not a lot of controls in the analog domain. You got part tolerances of the driver, part tolerances of the capacitors and inductors, and there's only so much you can do in the analog domain that is just much easier to do digitally. But now we're also hearing that there might be some extra filtering going on in the speaker. I can't tell you 100% for sure yet. You know, we, we did talk to the, the reps at Pioneer and they kind of, they kind of hinted to the fact that most of it's done at the receiver side, which is what we would expect. But when we get modules into tests, believe you me, I will be dissecting them, looking at the filters, and I will be measuring to see what's going on. So this human-related transfer function is one part of the patent. Right. Another part of the patent is the angle of the speaker. So basically an Atmos-enabled speaker, if I can here, pretend this is an Atmos-enabled speaker. You got your front firing drivers, your woofer and your tweeter, and then you've got your, we were calling it a Cybertronian driver, but yeah. let's, uh, you know. <laughs> let's use proper nomenclature. Let's use proper nomenclature. We got your elevation channel here. And I'm using these little rubber thingies here to, to do the angle. <laughs> there we go. And there, bam, you got your that Atmos works. driver firing up. So the angle is a little bit ambi you know, ambiguous in the patent because it says between 10 and 30 degrees in one area, then it says between 20 and 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So I don't understand why there's differences there. But, you know, we look at the Pioneer example, we have a lot of respect for Pioneer and Andrew Jones, and, you know, their speakers, their Atmos speakers are using 20 degrees. So we'll go so with 20. Let's say that's right, uh, you know, right in the middle of the curve there. Mm -hmm. Go with 20, get your little protractor out if you want to make your own speaker, <laughs> and, you know, measure the angle. And this is a, actually at about 40 degrees, so it's a little steep. You might want to use a, something a little <laughs> yeah. less aggressive. <laughs> so, you know, that's another area of the patent is the fact that there's an angle that the speaker is firing up at the ceiling. Now, another thing that happens with it when you use an Atmos-enabled speaker is you have a high-pass filter, again, done at the processor mm -hmm. in the base management like it should be, usually at like 180 hertz to 200 hertz. I think Pioneer does 180. Mm -hmm. So what happens is 180 hertz and below gets filtered off of the Atmos driver and goes into the main front firing speakers. Because at those frequencies, those frequencies are, you know, more omnidirectional mm -hmm. and they're going to be more localized right. at the listening area. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that firing up to try to create the elevation effect. Because mm -hmm. the elevation effect, again, according to the research, is really happening between the 7 and 12 kilohertz bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what our guys heard at Cedia when they heard these Atmos speakers. They were hearing the high frequency elevation effects and it was right. convincing if you were in the sweet spot mm -hmm. but it was mostly the high frequency effects not so much the low stuff yeah makes sense makes perfect sense so that's you know that's what you have there and then um, there's some con there's some specifications on directivity of the driver and the dispersion characteristics of the driver now what we're seeing is most of the companies that are making these modules are using a single three or four inch paper cone driver mm -hmm. sometimes treated there's pros and cons to that. The, the pro being, you know, you're sending a more focused beam in one area, you know, towards the ceiling, but you do start operating within the breakup region of that driver. You're limited with dynamic range, you're limited with high frequency response, you know, because a three or four inch cone is not going to give you full bandwidth out to 20K mm -hmm. with much uh, dispersion there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's some pros and cons. Pioneer's doing a coaxial driver, which I think is probably one of the best approaches where the tweeters inside the cone. You know, if you want to make your own Atmos speaker, you could do the same. I mean, I've got this JBL two-way, but you, you could take a speaker from a car, a six and a half inch coaxial, or a boat. Boat, yeah. You know, boat speakers, That'll same thing. It. Put it in a little box, fire it up to 20 degrees, plug it into your processor. If you want to give the Atmos a try at your home, you have the processor, but you don't want to spend $500 for a pair of modules. You know, I think that should be a thing you want to try out first before you go and sink a thousand bucks into four speakers. Just don't put the logo though. Don't put, yeah, don't put the logo <laughs> because there's a Dolby patent and you know, there's a patent infringement if you do that. So, you know, be careful with be that. Be careful, yeah. And you know, the other reason why I would suggest you try that too before you jump ship is you want to see if this stuff works mm -hmm. and you want to see if it covers your listening area. And quite frankly, in a year or two, if Oro 3D comes out and DTS UHD, comes out, most likely it's not going to be compatible with the reflective speaker technology. You know, the president of Aura already told us they don't support right. or agree with the reflected speaker technology. Mm -hmm. They prefer discrete speakers elevated in the, either in the ceiling or up higher. So, you know, I hate to tell people to go out and spend a thousand bucks on Atmos enabled speakers. A year later, you get Oro coming in and now you got to add more speakers or you got to remove those speakers. So, you know, buyer beware. You know, uh, it, to figure out what you want to do now and how you want to go with your home theater in the future and make a decision there. Yeah, and it's like any technology, Gene, you know, it comes with the pros and cons. And if you decide to jump in at the very beginning, you know, there are risks with doing that. We know this. Early adopters you know? always pay a premium in that, risk and absolutely. in price. Absolutely. Now, you know, this is not elegant. You know, we look at some of the. Um, some of the uh, some of the solutions that are coming out now. There's some high-end solutions, mm -hmm. some nice ones. I you know I think the most elegant is the Pioneer solution mm -hmm. because the driver is built into the cabinet. Right. It's not sunk in, and it just it looks like it's just a regular speaker. You don't Absolutely. even see it. Triad now has an Atmos elevation speaker that has four two-inch drivers in it, uh, so it gives you more dynamic range. Um, that looks pretty cool. Atlantic Tech has a little speaker module now. It's again it's a coaxial speaker and a little module. And you know, it's interesting because Dolby saying, you know, before they said you just put the speaker right on top of the other one and you're good, they didn't really give any specifications on how far the module needs to be from its companion mm -hmm. speaker. Well, now they're just basically saying you can put it on a bookcase, put it near your fish tank. You know, <laughs> they're really, they're not giving you specifics. No. So if, let's assume that that's true and you have some flexibility, 
then get the Atmos modules that, that look nice and, and put them, you know, relatively close to their companion speakers and try them out. Or try out one of your homemade speakers and put it on an angle and, and see what happens. Exactly. This is brilliant. This is like a nice science project to go ahead and do. Yeah, you know, when we get the Atmos speakers in in the next month or two, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting. Yeah. I'm going to try the Atmos enabled speakers and then I'm going to try my little JBL here and I want to see what the differences are. Yeah. We'll be sure to share them via a very well written article and video content as well. Yeah, you can rest assured that this is just the beginning of our Atmos coverage. I plan on doing a full expose on measurements, on listening tests, getting a big sample size of people to listen, not just one person, not just at one sweet spot, mm -hmm. and and different demo material too. Yeah, I don't want to just absolutely. do Dolby demo clips, I want to do real movies. Well, right now the only movie that's out is Transformers in Atmos. Makes sense, it's a Cybertronian speaker. That does make sense. It's <laughs> kind of ironic and it's, it's cool. It's cool, absolutely. I oh, mean, I think... Yeah. You know, if there's a movie to use, it's uh, Transformers. Sure, it's got a lot of wow factor. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, Gene. Well, thank you so much for the awesome uh, information over here. Yeah, I'm glad uh, we could do another video here. We're starting to learn more about this Atmos Elevation technology. And I do hope, you know, in the future that Dolby gives more information about it because I'd like to know, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of guy that likes to take things apart and understand how they work. I don't just take things at face value. So yeah. I want to I see the data. And right now we're trying to put these pieces of data together without signing non-disclosures and, and going in, yeah. you know, dark rooms and <laughs> government conspiracies and all that other stuff. So <laughs> we're trying our best here, guys. So, you know, be kind and... Uh, Next thing you know, we're going to have the men in black downstairs looking and for... Yeah, they're going to use a little uh, light thing the to black erase our memories. And stuff. Right, right. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for this. Anything else you would like to add? I think we're covered this topic enough and it's now time uh, to do some listening tests and when you hear us talking about Atmos again, expect us to have Atmos listening test results. Awesome. Until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.